Hi, welcome to another video in my series on moments. And in this particular video, what we're going to look at is horizontal beams resting on two supports. And I've got a question here and I've started to draw the diagram for it. And this is typical of the kind of thing that you will find in exercises uh, on this. So what we've got then is a uniform beam AB of mass 16 kilograms and of length 10 meters. And it rests on two supports C and D where AC is two meters and DB is four meters. And we've got particles of masses 8 kilograms and 10 kilograms are placed at the ends A and B respectively. And we've got to find the reactions at the supports C and D. Now to complete this diagram, what we need to do is put on some forces. So first of all, being a uniform beam AB, of mass 16 kilograms and length 10 meters, then I would know that the weight would act in the middle here. And so the middle is going to be five meters in from one end. So we'll just put the weight acting downwards here. All right, so that's going to be 16 G Newtons, okay, Mg. Now that means that as for distances in each of these sections now, knowing that from A to this point where the weight acts has got to be 5 meters, so that leaves us with 3 meters in there and obviously 1 meter in here. So I'd always fill in all of those spaces with distances. We've still got some more forces to put on. We've got the weights from the masses. We've got particles of masses 8 kilograms and 10 kilograms at placed at the ends A and B respectively. So at A we've got the 8 kilogram mass so that's going to provide us with a weight acting downwards of 8 G newtons. And similarly at B there's going to be the weight of the 10 kilogram mass that's going to be 10 G newtons. So I'd mark those in. Now there's going to be forces acting on these two supports at C and D. There'll be reactions pushing upwards to stop the beam from falling down. So we'll have a reaction here and we'll have a reaction here. Now these reactions are going to be different. They're going to be different because the problem's not symmetrical. And by that, I mean that suppose you had a question where you had a beam resting on two supports, let's say one there and one there, equal distance from either end. And if that were the case and you had, say, the same mass hanging from here as you've got hanging from here, then these two reactions would be exactly the same. This would be a symmetrical problem then if this mass, or I should say weight, was exactly the same as that weight there. And this distance here was the same as that distance there and the weight of the beam acts in the middle. Okay, this would be a symmetrical problem. These two reactions then would be exactly the same. But in this problem, it's not symmetrical, so they're going to have different reactions. Let's call those reactions R at C, say, R at C, Newtons, and the reaction at D, R, with a little subscript D there, Newtons. Okay, so uh, let's just remove this. Now, in order to find these reactions, what we need to do is to take moments. We always will need to take moments at some point in a question like this. And you can take moments, in fact, about any point that you like. But I'm going to show you several methods of how you could get these reactions. 
But the best place that you could take moments about would be either C or D. And the reason for that is that, as we've seen in earlier videos, that if you've got a force passing through the point where you're taking moments about, let's just say we take moments, say, about C, then this force here has no effect in turning the rod about this point C. There's no moment. So in an equation on moments, this force here, RC, would not be in the equation. This one would though, and it would be the only unknown in the equation, so it would make it a lot easier to solve. So I'm going to do that. Okay, I'm going to take moments about C first of all. But with questions like this, I'm always asked, you know, where do you take moments? Well, basically you can take them about any point you like, and I would certainly suggest you experiment with that. Work this question through several times, several different ways, just so that you appreciate which ways work best. You should obviously arrive at the same answers at the end of the day. Anyway, now I'm going to take moments then about C. And I'm going to need a positive sense for the moment. And I'm going to take positive as being a turn that is anti-clockwise. Why have I decided to do that? Well, I can see that that would mean that this force, the reaction from D, when you turn about C, is going to give an anti-clockwise positive turn, in other words. So it's going to be a positive term in my equation. And it just makes the algebra a little easier, okay, in my opinion anyway. So uh, that's the reason why I'm taking anti-clockwise as positive. Another point as well, a lot of people find this difficult and sometimes I would say to them, take a ruler, take a ruler, place it on a smooth surface. Let's pretend that this is the ruler. Hold your finger at the point C. Let's say that that's the point C. Put your finger on your ruler there, something like that, okay, and just hold it there. Now, when we start to push with this force, let's say the reaction here, let's suppose you push with your other finger in that direction, okay, let's just mark it in like that. What's going to happen is that the ruler will want to turn anti-clockwise about your finger. In other words, it will want to turn in a positive sense. So the moment then coming from this force, taking moments about C, remember is going to be the force times the perpendicular distance back to C. So that's going to be RD, okay, multiplied by the distance back to C. So that's going to be the one meter plus the three meters. So that's going to be four meters. So force times the distance there. Okay, that's that one taken care of. Let's do another force. Let's say we take the force acting at B here, 10 G Newtons. Let's just get rid of this, okay, and this. Remember, you're still holding onto the ruler at this point, but this time you're pushing with this force, say, you're pushing in this direction. So you'll find the ruler will want to turn in a clockwise sense now about this point. So in other words, that's going to be in the negative sense for this equation. So we've got minus, then we've got the force 10g multiplied by the distance from b back to c, which is going to be 4 plus 1 plus 3. Okay, so that's going to be, what's that, 3, 4, and 4, 8, so 10g times 8. Let's take another force now. Let's just get rid of this, and we'll take, say, the 16g. So it'll be pushing in this direction, and what effect will it have? Well, it will want to turn the ruler about this point in a clockwise sense. So that's going to be negative to what we've taken here. So that's going to be minus, so it'll be 16g times 3. So minus 16g multiplied by 3. Any other forces to look at? Yes, there's this one here, 8g 
newtons. So we'll just remove that and we'll have a look at the 8G. So 8G is pushing in this direction. So what effect is that going to have on the ruler? Well, if we're holding it here, the ruler will want to turn in an anti-clockwise sense about here. That's the positive sense that we've set up here. So it's going to be a plus moment. And it will be the force, 8G, times that distance to C, which is 2. 8G multiplied by 2. And as for this force, RC, through this point here, OK, let's just remove that. Its moment will be 0 because the force passes through this point. You can even try whilst you're here, just push in that direction through your finger. The ruler will not turn at all, OK, about this point if you were just to push through your finger. So that's all the force is done. What is the resultant moment on this? Well, it's an equilibrium, so it must equal 0. So there's our equation with one unknown, the reaction at D. And so we should be able to solve it. So if we just clean this up, we've therefore got 4RD, OK, for that one. And then we've got minus 80G, minus 48G, and then here plus 16G. And that equals 0. If you add these G's terms together, you should find you get minus 112G. And if we add that to both sides, you're going to then get, therefore, 4RD equals 112G. So if I divide both sides by 4, we then end up with the reaction at D equals 112G divided by 4, which is, in fact, 28G. 28G Newtons. And if you wanted to take this further, just use the appropriate value of G that would be given to you. Say G is 9.8 maybe, then you can just figure out what 28 times 9.8 is. OK, but I'm just going to leave it like that, the exact value, 28 G Newtons. Now, once we've got the reaction at D, there's still the reaction at C to find. Now, I could take moments, say, about D, and work out a similar kind of equation to this. D, The reaction at D wouldn't come into my moments equation because that force passes through D, and I would get RC. But I'm not going to do that because there's a quicker way, I feel. Once you've taken your moments equation, we could resolve. We could resolve vertically. Let's just put this in, resolve vertically. And again, it doesn't matter whether you go up or down as positive. I'm going to go up, though, purely because I've got my unknown reaction acting in the positive sense now. And it just means that the term in my equation is positive. Anyway, so if I do this, what equation am I going to get? Well, we've got RC, OK, the reaction at C. And then we've got plus the reaction at D. Well, I can take that value as 28G now, plus 28G. And then I've got these forces acting against these two, acting in the opposite direction to what I've selected as positive. So we've got minus 8G, minus 16G, and minus 10G. And this would be the resultant force on the beam. And because it's an equilibrium, then we find that that resultant force must be equal to zero. So I've got one unknown in the equation, and so I can just solve it for that reaction at C. If I add these terms together, I find that they come to minus 6g. Add 6G to both sides, and I therefore find that the reaction at C is equal to 6G. 6G Newtons. OK? Now that's quite quick. But I did say to you that you could get that reaction at C by taking moments. Moments about D. 
and I'll do that for you now so you can just compare the methods and also it will just give you further practice on this idea here. So if you did decide to take moments then about D, okay, we need to set up a positive sense. And again, it's up to you. It doesn't matter which way you go. Let's just take this out now. It doesn't matter which way you go. But I'm just thinking ahead and I'm thinking, well, OK, I want RC. I'd like it to be a positive term in my equation. And I can see that if I held a ruler, say, at this point here, at essentially D, and I pushed in this direction, OK, then the ruler is going to want to turn in a clockwise sense about this point here. So I'm going to have clockwise as my positive sense. And on that basis then, when we look at the moment provided by the reaction at C, it's going to be RC times the distance back to D now. So it'd be RC times a distance of four meters, the three plus the one. So that'd be RC times four. OK, so that's that force. Let's do the 8G Newtons one now. OK, so that would be pushing in this direction, downwards. But it's going to mean that if I push downwards, the ruler is going to want to turn in an anti-clockwise sense, OK, about here. So that's going to be in the negative sense. So that's going to be minus 8G multiplied by the distance back to D, which is 2 metres plus 3 metres plus 1 metre. A total of 6 metres then. So 8G times 6. So that's the 8G one taken care of. Let's just take that out. Let's move on to the 16G force. Pushing down here, I can see that the ruler would want to turn in this direction about my finger anti-clockwise. So that's going to be negative as well. So minus the force, 16g, times the distance back to d, which is 1 meter. We've also got now another force to take into account, the 10g newtons here. So that's pushing in this direction, down like that. It's going to mean that the ruler will want to turn in that direction about my finger. So that's going to be now clockwise in the positive sense. So that's going to have a moment of plus then 10g, the force, times the distance back to d, which is going to be 4. Remember, I don't have to bring in the force rd into my equation because there'll be no moment about this point d. If you were to push through this point here, the ruler wouldn't turn at all. OK, so uh, that would be my start of my equation anyway, but this gives us the resultant moment about d, but we know it's in equilibrium, so therefore that resultant moment must be equal to zero. So all it means now is just to tidy up this equation and solve for the reaction at c. So we've got 4rc here, and then we've got minus 48g, minus 16g, and then plus 40g, and that equals zero. Add these terms together, that gives us minus 24g. So I'm going to add 24g to both sides, so therefore I get 4rc equals 24g. Divide both sides by 4, and I end up with the reaction at C equals 6g. 6g newtons, same as what we had up here. But you can see this is a lot more work than it was when we did resolving. So that's the reason why I would just do one moment's equation and then one resolving equation. And that's generally the process that we use when we're dealing with problems like this. OK, well, I hope that's given you some idea of how we can handle examples that uh, are similar to this, and you can use this as a model. And I hope you kind of like this idea of using a ruler where you just hold it at the point you're taking moments. If you're finding difficulty, just understanding which way is positive, which way is negative. 
okay it's just a way that might help you to work with them all right okay so that brings us now to the end of this particular tutorial